What's going on guys, my name is Matt, and in my last video I showed you an $800 gaming PC that you can build right now, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to put it together step by step. Now I will briefly go over each of the parts in this video, but if you want to hear in-depth explanations of each part then I would head over to my previous video linked below. Now beyond putting this system together, I'm going to be showing you stuff like how to install Windows and activate it thanks to today's sponsor, CDK Deals. Are you tired of that pesky Activate Windows watermark? Then you can remove it for under $16 thanks to today's sponsor, CDK Deal. All you have to do is head to the link in the description, add the Windows 10 key to your card, and when you hit checkout, use the code MAT20. Then within seconds of checking out, you'll have your key. Then you just have to search activation settings, click change product key, enter it in, press next, press activate, and boom, you have a fully activated copy of Windows 10. These are legit keys that CDK Deals gets directly from Microsoft, and by grabbing a key from them, you're directly supporting the channel. So like I said before, this is going to be a full step-by-step -step guide showing you how to put the PC together, how to install Windows, and how to set it up with all the drivers and BIOS tweaks. Now building a PC can seem like a daunting task, but honestly it's pretty simple, and if you get the same parts I'm using in this video, then you'll be able to follow along exactly, making things even easier. Before you get building, it's important to have everything ready. You want to make sure you have all your parts you need, an open area to work on, and a few specific tools. The first is a a standard Phillips head screwdriver, the second is a smaller Phillips head screwdriver, and you may need a pair of pliers to install the standoffs, but I'll get more into that later. I would highly recommend using a magnetic screwdriver because it can make building the PC a little bit easier in a number of ways. Once your workspace is clear, your tools are in hand, and you have a few hours blocked out to build, then you are ready to start assembling your PC. The first parts I like to start with are the CPU and motherboard. The CPU used in this build is probably the best value per dollar mid-range gaming CPU available right now. This is the Ryzen 5 3600, which is a 6-core, 12-thread CPU on the Zen 2 architecture. This is a great CPU for modern gaming, streaming, and even video editing. You can open up this box and pull out the CPU clamshell, cooler box, and set them aside. For the motherboard, this is the ASRock B550M Pro 4. This is a micro ATX motherboard with plenty of expansion, 4 DIMM slots, good back panel I.O., and decent VRMs for overclocking. Go ahead and open up your motherboard box, pull out the board itself, the manual, the I.O. shield, and the M.2 screw. Go ahead and put the board itself on top of the box, bring your attention to the CPU socket which is at the center of the motherboard. Before we install our CPU, we need to push down and out on this metal retention arm, then lift it up so it's perpendicular to the board. You can now open up the CPU clamshell and pick your CPU up, handling it only by the edges. If you flip it over, you can see there are a bunch of pins which are very fragile, so make sure not to touch or damage them. Bring the CPU over to the socket. There are a few ways to know if it's oriented the right way. The first is to find the little dot on one of the corners of the CPU and line it up with the marked corner on the motherboard, or the way I prefer is to line it up so the product name is next to the socket AM4 text on the CPU socket itself. Once lined up, you can lower it into place applying no pressure, it should just slip right in on its own, and once you're sure it's in, go ahead and push down on this metal retention arm making sure it clips into place. To cool the CPU, we're just going to be using the stock cooler that comes with the 3600. This works fine, looks decent, and comes free in the box. But before we install this, we need to remove these two plastic pieces. There are two screws on each, and once those are removed, you can lift them away, but leave on the back plate. You can now get out your cooler, flipping it over you can see there's thermal paste pre-applied, meaning there's no reason to add our own. Go ahead and lower it down with the AMD logo facing the large metal motherboard heatsink and making sure the screws on the cooler lined off with the standoffs in the motherboard backplate. With it in position, start by tightening down the cooler, rotating each screw a few turns at a time and going in a cross pattern to ensure an even distribution of pressure across the CPU IHS. With that done, your CPU and cooler are successfully installed, and we can now move on to the RAM. The RAM I went with is the 16GB kit of DDR4 Oloy RAM that runs at 3600MHz CL18. This is a fast two-stick kit, which is important because Ryzen CPUs rely heavily on fast, dual-channel kits of memory to get maximum performance. Go ahead and get out your two RAM sticks and bring your attention to the four RAM slots on the motherboard. To make sure these are running in dual-channel operation, we need to install them in slots 2 and 4, which are 
enter the two right here. Start by pressing down the cliffs on each dim slot, then you can take your first stick and orient it so the notch in the ram lines up with the notch in the slot. You can lower it down, and once you're sure it's in correctly, press down on each end until both ends clip in and the retention clip clicks shut. Once the first stick is in, you can repeat the same process for the second stick. With that done, we can now move on to installing our SSD. Bring your attention to this little heatsink right here. Start by removing the two screws on it and lift it away. With this flipped over, go ahead and remove the plastic on the thermal pad. Go ahead and now grab out your SSD. This is a 500 gigabyte Crucial P1 NVMe SSD. This offers a lot of fast storage and a form factor about the size of a piece of gum. Take your SSD at an angle and line the notch in it with the notch in the M.2 slot, insert it at an angle, then hinge it down. Carefully set the heatsink back over the SSD, making sure not to dislodge the SSD from its slot. Then once down, you can reinstall both of the heatsink screws. With that all done, it means we can set the board to the side and get out our case. Start by opening up the box, flipping it upside down, and pull the box away from the case, which is easier than trying to pull the case away from the box. Once the case is out, you can unscrew the two back panel thumb screws, then pull back on it and lift this metal panel away. Now you can set the case onto its side and remove the four thumb screws securing the glass panel. Next, take the foam, plastic bag, back panel, and glass panel and put them all in the case box to get them out of the way and protected while you build your PC. The case I went with is this DIY PC Shadow ARGB chassis. This is a $65 case that isn't the highest quality ever, but it's relatively easy to build in, has a decent power supply basement, and best of all, it has a full mesh front panel with three included ARGB fans. With the case still on its side, go ahead and undo the screw bag, open this bag up, and get out four of the standoffs that look like this. We need to install a standoff in the holes here, 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 and here. Sometimes you can just tighten these down by hand, but if you need a little help, you can use a nut driver like me or use pliers to get more grip. Now, before we install the motherboard, we need to get out the IO shield we pulled from the box earlier. Orient it like this and bring it down to the IO cutout where you'll line it up and press each corner into place until it's secure. This can be a little annoying, but just keep at it. At this point, you can also remove the PCIe cover by bending it back and forth. I did this later in the build, but I recommend you do it now. With the standoffs in, the IO shield installed and the PCIe cover removed, it's now time to install the motherboard. Pick it up, handling it by the cooler and lower it down at an angle, IO first and line the IO up with the IO shield and make sure you can see the standoffs beneath the motherboard holes. Now out of the screw bag, get eight of the motherboard screws that look like this, install one into each of the motherboard holes with a corresponding standoff beneath it. With the motherboard successfully installed, you can now lift the case back onto its feet. Next, grab out your power supply. This is a 600 watt, 80 plus bronze certified unit from EVGA. This is a good value and high quality power supply with plenty of headroom for future upgrades. Unbundle the wires and insert it into the back of the case with the fan facing down like this. Now line up the holes in the power supply and in the case and grab out the four power supply screws that came in the PSU box. Install these one at a time into each of the holes to secure the power supply into place. Bring your attention to the back of the case again and unbundle these wires. With this done, it's now time to start routing cables. Start by taking the 24 pin cable that looks like this and push it through this hole here. Take the USB 3 cable that looks like this and push it through that same hole. At the top right of the case, take your CPU power cable that looks like this and push it through this hole here. Now bring your attention back down, grab the PCIe power cable that looks like this and push it through this hole here. Take the HD audio cable and push it through the hole to the right of that one. Now take the USB 2.0 cable and all the small front panel cables and stick them through the same hole as the PCIe power cable went through earlier. With that done, you can tip the case back onto its side, making sure none of the cables slip back out. Now it's time to start plugging things in. Let's start with the USB 3 cable at the right side of the board next to the RAM slots. Take the cable and line the cutout in the header with the bump out on the connector and press it into place. Directly above that is where the 24 pin connector inserts. Take the cable and line the clip on the connector with the bump out on the header and lower it into place. Once lowered down, press in until the clip snaps shut. Now bring your attention to the top left of the motherboard near the I.O. Just like with the 24 pin, take this cable and line the clip in it with the bump out on the header. Line it up, lower it down, then press it in until the clip secures shut. Next, bring your attention to the bottom of the motherboard. Starting near the PCIe covers, take the HD audio cable and find the HD audio header. Take the cable with the HD audio text facing up and press it into place. 
You can also look at the pin layout and line it up with the header pin layout to make sure it's being plugged in correctly. Next to the center bottom of the board, grab the USB 2 cable and plug it into one of the two USB headers with the USB text facing down. Again, you can look at the pin layout on both to ensure it's being plugged in correctly. We are now going to plug in all of the little front panel cables in the opposite corner of the HD audio. Start with the power switch one and plug it into these two pins here. Orientation doesn't matter for this because it's just a switch. Directly next to this, plug in the power LED connector with the positive facing away from the power switch connector. Now directly below that one, plug in the hard drive LED with the positive in the same orientation as the other LED connector. With this done, we can now install our graphics card. Start by removing the screw in the top PCIe cover, lift that one away, and if you haven't already, bend the second one back and forth until it snaps off. Now loosen the screw a little, lift it up, and then tighten it back down. Now get your graphics card and take it out of the packaging. This is the AMD RX 5500 XT. Pricing is kind of crazy right now, and at the time of making this video, this was the least overpriced card at around $230, but if these aren't available when you're watching this, then your best bet is to grab an RX 580 off of eBay for around $180. With your card in hand, open up the PCIe lock on the motherboard like this. Now lower the card down into the case, lining up the notch in the card with the notch in the top PCIe slot. Once you're sure it's lowered down correctly, press down until it secures into place and the PCIe lock snaps shut. Now take your PCIe power connector and plug in one of the 8-pin connectors into the 8-pin power header on the graphics card. You can now lower this cover back down and reinstall the screw you took out earlier, and a second one if you want the card to be extra secure. Now put the case back onto its feet because there is one last cable to plug in. Take one of these SATA power cables that looks like this, bring it to the RGB and fan controller board, orient it like this, then plug it in here like this. The final thing to do before reinstalling the panels is to cable manage. Basically just pull any cable slack to the back of the case and bundle things up as you see fit. I was super lazy with my cable management for this build and only spent a few minutes on it, but you can make things as neat as you want. Just be cognizant of how it looks in the main chamber because that's what's important. With cable management done, it's now time to reinstall the panels, which for the back one it just slides on like this, then you just reinstall the two thumb screws. For the glass panel, start with it flipped upside down and remove the back plastic. Now flip it right side up, handling it by the edges as not to add fingerprints. Now remove the top plastic and reinstall the four thumb screws. With that done, you are ready to boot your PC up for the first time. With that being said, there are still a number of things you need to do before you can start gaming. The first is to install Windows. To do this, you need another PC and a USB flash drive that's wiped and has at least 8GB of capacity. Go to the Microsoft page linked in the description and download the Windows Media Creation Tool. Open this up and let it run until you get to this screen. Accept the agreement, then it will bring you to this what do you want to do window and just select create installation media and hit next. Now you'll select your language and version options. Make sure you select your language of choice, Windows 10 and 64 bit and then press next. Now under choose which media to use, select USB flash drive and hit next. Now select your flash drive, which all data will be erased from, so make sure it doesn't have anything important on it. Once selected, hit next. It will now download the Windows 10 files to this flash drive. Once this is done, you can hit finish and eject your flash drive. Next, take your flash drive to the new PC and plug it into one of the USB 3 ports on the back. Turn on your PC and it should automatically have this spinning wheel at the bottom and boot to this screen, but if it doesn't do that, boot into BIOS by turning the PC off and as soon as you turn it on, start mashing the delete key, tab over to exit and select force boot to the USB drive. This should then bring you to this screen. Hit next, then hit install now. It will then ask you for a Windows key. If you have one from CD Key Deals, you can put it in now, or you can do it later by selecting I don't have a product key. Once this is done, you can accept this agreement and hit next. If you don't have a product key, you will then be asked to select your version, which I recommend Windows 10 Pro. Now select custom install Windows. Now select drive zero and hit next. It will now go through and install Windows. When that's done, it'll bring you to the next page where you'll go through the prompts to set up your account and select whatever you want from these options. After that, it will do some more installations then bring you into Windows. With that done, Windows is successfully installed, but we need to do two more things before you start gaming. The first is to install drivers. For the chipset drivers, head to the link in the description, scroll down, select chipset, socket AM4, then B550. Hit submit, select Windows 1064 
Pit and download the latest version. Once downloaded, open it up and let it do its thing for a few minutes until it brings you to this screen where you press install and let it install the drivers. Once done, you can restart the system and then head to the graphics driver link in the description. Select graphics, 5500 series, 5500 series again, 5500 XT, then hit submit and download the Windows 10 64-bit drivers. Once downloaded, open these up and hit install, which will eventually bring you to another installation window. Hit install, let it do its thing, and then once done, you can restart your computer again. Once you confirm that everything is installed okay in your PC is working fine, you can shut your PC down and when you start it back up, smash the delete key repeatedly to boot in the BIOS. Go over to OC Tweaker, go down to load XMP settings, click on this and select XMP Profile 1. This ensures our RAM will be running at the full recommended speed to get the most performance out of our system. Then go over to Exit and select Save Changes and Exit. With that completed, everything is done, you are now ready to download some games and enjoy your new system. Again, if you want to see detailed part explanations and benchmarks, go to the video linked in the description. I hope this guide was helpful to some of you out there. I know this isn't the best price to performance PC ever, but with the way the market is right now this is about as good as you can do for 800 bucks so yeah guys i think this wraps this video up i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing and as always this is matt from tech by matt signing out